Hello, everyone. So from this slide, you can see that I am Nita Jastogi and working at uh, Physical Research Laboratory, which is popularly known as PRL. This is a unit of Department of Space, Government of India. So what is the purpose of making this video? As you can see the title, what are atmospheric aerosol and why do we study them? So since many years, my relatives, my friends, my neighbors, and many other people, they ask me, what do you do? And I say, I am a researcher and I'm working in atmospheric aerosols. And they then they respond, oh, okay. So from their face, I can visualize that they want to know more, but they are hesitant to ask. And since they are not asking, I am hesitant to tell. So I thought, why don't I make a video and just tell what is atmospheric aerosol and why do we study them? So in this, I would, I'm trying to do that. Okay, so let us see. So you will think that I am talking about aerosol and suddenly I started showing you nice pictures. So you can see this very beautiful picture. Oh, that is another very good picture. Oh, there are again pictures with models. Then again, very good picture. Again, one more, one more. So what is common in among all these pictures? If you notice, you will see, you will see many things. And then you will say probably that light is common among all. But I will say, no, it is not light. It is aerosols common in all the pictures. Now let us see some more pictures. So here we see Eiffel Tower. This picture was taken on 14th March 2014. Then you see India Gate, winter 2019. Then this is California, just two years back in September, there was a uh, uh, forest fire and this kind of picture were taken by people. And then this is anybody's home and we can see there is a lot of dust. And this we see very often, every week or two weeks, we see too much of the things on our fence. And there are sometimes just too much that you can write on that. And then this is the picture of North India from satellite. Again, there is something common in among all the pictures. What is that? That is aerosols. So what is aerosol? In common language, people call it dust. Or in Hindi, we call it dhul. dhul which is omnipresent on our earth. Wherever you go, you will find aerosols. We also call them particles or total suspended particulate or suspended particulate matter, SPM, or sometimes this PM10, PM2.5, you would have heard multiple times. It is used often used in news. So PM10 means particulate matter, which is smaller than 10 micron in size. PM2.5 means particulate matter, which is smaller than 2.5 micron in size. Size means diameter. Same way PM1 means which is less than one micron. So how do they look like? I mean, or just to have some idea what size we are talking about. So here, what you see, this uh, big thing. Uh, let me just take the uh, pointer. Okay. So here, what you see, this is our human hair. Diameter of this is about 50 to 180 micron. And then here you see a very fine thin beach, which is about 90 micron. Then here is a grain of salt, which is about 60 micron. White blood cells, about 25 micron. Grain of pollen, about 15 micron. Dust particles, about 10 micron. Red blood cells, about 7 to 8 micron. Respiratory droplet, 5 to 10 micron. And then further keep going. And lowest you, you can see the Zika virus, about 25 nanometer. So this is the kind of particles we are talking about. These are aerosols. They are all part of aerosols. Then question comes, or what is the definition of aerosol? So solid or liquid particles suspended in the air, they are called aerosols. From where they come? They come from variety of natural sources. For example, sea salt spray. Now what is that? Uh, we have seen, see everybody has seen the sea. And we see that at the sea shore, we see that too much of, uh, you know, uh, that froth is there. When wave overturns, it traps air, it makes bubbles. And when those bubbles burst, they come in the air. And along with the winds, then they can go wherever winds are going. Same way, 
wind blown dust we have seen every now and then then volcano volcanoes are not means the source of aerosol not which is coming every day it happens once in a while but it puts huge amount of aerosol in the atmosphere and then biogenic what do you mean by biogenic biogenic means we have seen them in trees or plants there are pollens or uh, leaf fragments and all these things they come once they become uh, very fine particles they move in the air then you have forest fire which happens every now and then so these are all the natural sources of aerosols in the atmosphere then there are sources which are man made or anthropogenic what are those sources industrial emissions we all know that industries put too much of particles in the atmosphere vehicular emissions in all big cities you can see this kind of traffic which is putting too much of pollution in the air biomass burning which we hear every means around diwali time we hear that uh, there is too much of uh, um petrol residue burning going on punjab haryana which is polluting the whole uh, north india and all so biomass burning thermal power plant which is almost everywhere in india and they use coal and you are thermal power means you are generating the uh, electricity by uh, heat so you are using coal as a source for that and then this cow dung cakes cow dung cakes we know that many poor people they are using this cakes as a source of fuel for cooking so these are all the sources of aerosol in the atmosphere the size of aerosol as we have seen in the previous slide it can vary from a few nanometer up to several micrometer it can be anywhere in between that depending upon from which source it is coming then these sources emit particles as well as precursor of that particles now what does that mean so if particle is coming as a particle in that atmosphere then you will call it as primary particle and if these sources are emitting many gases and those gases are converting into particles then it is called secondary particles like for example thermal power plant they emit sulfur dioxide many industries sulfur dioxide nox vehicle vehicle emission nox and those sulfur dioxide or nox they convert into sulfate or nitrate particles so those are secondary particles same way many sources emit vocs volatile organic carbon which converts into organic carbon so that is secondary organic carbon then ultimately they get removed from the atmosphere by dry or wet deposition dry deposition means falling down under gravity wet deposition means with rain or snow and all they are coming down the to the surface now if we talk about the lifetime of these aerosol in lower troposphere it is just about a week only a week so then you may can think that it means it is just for a week then why you are worrying so much so we will talk about that why we are worrying so much so lifetime of aerosol in lower atmosphere is just about a week now these particles can be of different now chemically if you think they can be very different so something is coming from sea will be very different than what is coming from the industries or vehicular emissions again biogenic sources they will give you different type of particles thermal power plant will be different type of particles so that means composition will depend upon the source of the aerosols now if you think how they look like so this is the picture uh, very nice picture taken by someone so these are some of the particles so this is how dust look like this is how ammonium sulfate look like marine organic sulfuric acid sea salts pollen from trees biomass smoke and all they all look like this if you put them in under microscope and you can see the scale this bar is 1 micrometer you can think of that which size of particle we are talking about which we have seen the previous slides now again if you see other type of uh, particles under microscope so these are metal oxides or metal sulfates or metal oxides and silicates and so on so this is how aerosol look like if you put them under strong microscope now the question comes if aerosols are there in that atmosphere let them be there why you are have to worrying too much if dust is there you can clean it so why you are worrying let, let them be there so let us talk why we are studying aerosol or why studying aerosol is important first thing because it affect our climate now how it is affecting the climate so we all know about greenhouse gases how that uh, it is heating our atmosphere you know some energy is coming in and some energy is going out if they are balanced if they are balanced that means no heating no cooling temperature is maintained but if you if uh, uh, means uh, change means uh, 
if this valence is disturbed because of some reason, then what will happen? That uh, either your energy coming in will be more or going out will be more. So if that valence is disturbed, it will affect the temperature of the earth. And aerosols are the known constituents which affect this valence. That depends upon the composition. I am not going about that right now, but they affect our radiation budget. That means the temperature of earth can be affected by aerosols. Then hydrological cycle. Now you can think that how hydrological cycle is related to aerosol. Actually, these aerosols are acting as a seed of clouds. Clouds cannot form if there are no aerosols in the atmosphere. Water vapor, they need something to get condensed on. And this surface is provided by aerosol. So aerosols are very important for forming the clouds. Now again, what type of those particles? They are hygroscopic or hydrophilic. Depending upon that, they can affect whether there will be more rain or less rain. So there is big study going on in this particular direction, but they affect our hydrological cycle. Then they affect our air quality. That we all know that uh, they are causing air pollution. We know means air pollution is related to those. So how it is affecting? One thing is haze. You can see that haze or fog, whatever you see, this is all because of aerosol which are there. And then they affect human health also. Now, how they are affecting human health? So, as I said, they are present in the air. When we breathe in, when we breathe air, these particles go in. When we exhale, these particles come out. But fraction of some particles, they get attached to our epithelial cell, epithelial cells of lungs. Now, all particles can't go in your body. Only particles which are smaller than 10 micron, they can only enter your body. But depending upon the size, they can go deep into your body. For example, if particles are smaller than 100 nanometer, they can go very deep into your lungs. And if they are further smaller, they can pass through the microphage and they can go into your blood stream. And through blood stream, they can reach any organ of your body. So if they are reaching to your any organ of your body, that means they can affect there. In fact, people have observed Alzheimer, Parkinson, various cardiovascular disease, uh, and variety of diseases are led to aerosol. And this, this is very hot area of uh, research for aerosols. How aerosols are affecting health. And then they also affect our uh, aquatic ecosystem. How? So as I said that once aerosols are there in the atmosphere, then they move along with the air. So air is going everywhere, we know. So many of these aerosols are nutrients also. For example, this nitrate or iron, they are actually nutrients. Their removal over remote ocean or lake actually become the supply of nutrients to those places. So that is how they affect uh, aquatic ecosystem. And then if you have too much of acidic species in the air, they will come in the form of acid rain to the ground. And if it is coming in the form of acid rain, it can affect our monuments. For example, effect of acid rain can be there on Taj Mahal, or it can affect your crops, or it can affect your uh, buildings, and many other things. So these are the some major region how aerosol affect us. Now, if we talk about aerosol, it is a multidisciplinary research area. People from many fields study in that, mainly physics, chemistry, and environmental sciences. But in addition, people working in agriculture or medicine or social science or metrology, biology, earth science, architecture, many. People from many uh, uh, different uh, disciplines, they study aerosols. So with this, I hope you have some idea about aerosol. If you have any question related to aerosol sources or why we study them, uh, you can talk to me or you can write me an email. Sometime we will discuss that if these are aerosols are there in the atmosphere, so how do you study them? What is the way you collect, you measure, and then what you in, infer from that and all. So sometimes we'll discuss that. So here I will stop right now. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.